In today's video I'll show you how I made this Stormtrooper by Star Wars 3D. So every piece of the model essentially follows the same pattern. What I'm going to do is start off with an undercoat of Citadel colour White Scar, which is the whitest kind of primer that I, I'm able to find. The good thing with that is it also comes in an actual pot of White Scar as well, so you've got the, the exact same tone of white, which is important because no matter how good your primer is, you're never going to completely cover every angle of the model. So the first step to do after you've primed it is to take some of that white scar paint from the pot and then just start dabbing it around because it's such a thin paint you want to kind of dab it rather than sort of try and paint it on. Uh, that just gives a, a much better result. And just go around the model any bits that need tidying up, any bits that haven't quite got the primer on them. And yeah just sort of eyeball it really you only need to concentrate on the armor obviously anything around the side here is going to be painted in a different color next you just need to take your black color of choice and then start bl blocking in all the undersuits just being obviously very careful when you get close to the white armor because you really don't want to get any of that black on the white once you're happy with all the black, now it's time to take a lighter grey paint and we're going to do a dry brush over all those black parts. So for this I'm taking Dawnstone by Citadel and making sure that I've not got too much on the brush. It's just a case of going around all the black and just trying to pick up those little creases just to give it a bit more definition. And after that dry brush, you can see that the creases and all the folds have uh, been really brought out. So while I'm doing that dry brushing, the next thing I'm going to do is go with a slightly darker grey this time. I'm going to do Mechanica's Standard Grey. And taking the gun, um, you can see I've dry brushed the hands already. So what I'm going to do now is dry brush over the gun. And so I just want a slightly different grey, just slightly darker, just to separate it out from the hands. And it's, again, in case of just going around the gun and just catching those raised details. Okay so that dry brush has now picked out some of that detail given a bit more interest. So what I'm going to do now just to finish off the gun is take the a little bit of gunmetal silver and I'm just to put a tiny little bit again back on the dry brush. What I'm going to do is just stipple it in a couple of places just to give the gun a little bit of battle damage here and there to sort of show the underlying metal underneath. There's no real um, exact science to this, just kind of dabbing it here and there where you think makes the most sense. And again, it's the aim here is just to give it a bit more realism, just a little bit more focus and attention. Okay, and I'm fairly happy with that. I think there's a little bit of silver, just makes a difference. So whilst I've got the uh, gun metal silver out, what I'm going to do is just pick out a couple of details. So this um, sort of ring on the back of the gun, and then actually on the lower part of the model, which I actually printed off in one whole piece. Uh, there's just a couple of bits to do. Little couple of rivets here and there on the gun bag. So then the last part of the armour is the helmet, which is kind of a paint by numbers kind of deal really. Um, it's pretty simple, just obviously follow some reference pictures. Again, it's just a combination of black, white, grey and a little bit of blue for the stripes. The only other thing I did is throw a black wash over the grill parts on the back there just to pick out that definition of the lines um, on the front as well there. So yeah, as long as you do a fairly sort of neat job um, it comes out pretty nice so I'm just starting to put them together and I just checked the reference pictures and noticed that I just missed a couple of details so these dots along here should be painted in grey and on the back of the, the lower part this should also be painted in grey around uh, what's supposed to be this sort of grenade canister on the back so I'm just going to go in and quickly paint those in now and then we should be done with the main model. So now it's on to the base. Now the base is quite a large hexagon base. 
Obviously, it's got the Imperial cog symbol in the middle, and it's just kind of got sort of tiling detail around the sides. I mean, I could just leave it black, but I think we can do something a bit more interesting than that. I'm umming and ahhing about the colours, but I think I'm going to go with... I'm going to leave the rim black. So basically, I, I've just sprayed it with um, Sisdale Black Primer, which is a really good primer, actually, because it's, it's got a little bit of gloss to it. Um, so yeah, so I think I'm going to leave, leave the black as it is. Um, what I'm going to do is paint the tiles. I think I'm going to go with grey, sort of Mechanicus grey. I think I'm going to dry brush the sort of centre part here with a silver. I think I'm just going to go direct silver over the black. And then I think for the Imperial Cog, I think I'm going to paint it red. I think red against the black and the silver should look quite good. <laughs> I think sometimes how you vision something sometimes how it comes out of two different things but I think yeah I think the red against the, the black will pop and obviously because the trooper is just black and white there's, there's not really any colour here so I think just a small bit of red for the focus on that I think will will do quite a lot for the model uh, we'll see I can always change my mind if it doesn't come out how I think it is so getting the messy job out of the way first I'm going to do a dry brush of silver over this centre part So I immediately changed my mind, instead of doing a dry brush, I've just done a complete coverage of silver on that. And now what I'm going to do is put some Nuln Oil, which is basically a black wash, over the whole thing. So with that shade now dry, what I'm going to do is take some Dawnstone, which is a sort of lightish grey. It's quite a thin paint, this one, but um, what I'm going to do is just now go around and start sort of dabbing it across each of these tiles, trying to keep the recesses um, black that I've already got in there. So this might take a little bit of time. But hopefully this will have a nice effect by the end of it. And while I wait for that first coat of red to dry, what I'm going to do is go back to the sort of honeycomb effect. And I'm going to take a lighter grey, uh, a menstruatum grey in this case, and just using a dry brush, I'm just going to go around and just start stippling a little bit over each of those tiles, just so it leaves a little bit of um, lighter colour paint on there. And it just, just breaks it up a little bit. Um, you can see the effect there. Um, I say it's, it's, it's subtle, but it, it just makes it a little bit more interesting, makes it slightly more realistic looking than having this completely um, one solid colour of grey. And then finally, in the exact same way as I just did that stippling on the grey, I'm going to do the same thing on the red. And I'm going to take uh, Wild Rider Red, which is a slightly orangey kind of red. And I'm just going to carry it, do the exact same thing. Um, Get off some of the excess and start dabbing away, just stippling on, just to brighten it up a little bit. Well, I might have got a bit carried away with the dabbing there because I've kind of uh, pretty much altered the colour of that red a little bit, but I, I like the texture of it. I think it's got a bit of nice interest to it, so I'm going to keep it as it is. Okay, so I think we're just about done then. So I still need to glue the two parts of the Stormtrooper together. I still haven't actually glued them together at the waist yet. Um, so let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to obviously varnish the Trooper. I'm going to varnish him with a matte uh, pro um, varnish. And I'm probably going to do the base probably satin. And hopefully that should be good to go. So I'm going to go off and do that now and I'll come back and show you the final result. And here we have him, all finished. So this was quite a fun little build actually. It's a fairly quick paint scheme, obviously, I mean, it's black and white. You I went through the steps, not a lot of steps to it really. So as a sort of a beginning model, this is you know really a nice one to sort of try out if you're new to 3D printing or just new to model building and painting in general. And the results, I think, speak for themselves. I mean, the, the sculpting, as always, is a top job by 
uh, Star Wars 3D. What I will just say, actually, is they have improved, just over the last couple of months, I've noticed they've improved how they do the cuts in the sculpts. So when the pieces go together, particularly uh, around the waist here, there was no gap filling whatsoever needed. What they've done is kind of raised um, the edges up a little bit. So when, when the two points connect, all the gaps are hidden. Um, again, the, sh the shoulders are a really good example of that. There's absolutely no gaps at all. So what that means is you can you can paint the pieces individually, then glue them together later on, which is what I did, uh, which obviously makes a much easier um, way of painting. I mean, if you think about where that blaster is, that would have been a nightmare to try and paint behind all that, behind all that armor, if that if the whole thing was put together beforehand. So yeah, so well done to uh, the sculptors on this. They've they're really improving the models massively. Really, really helps the painters. And I really like the detail on the blaster. It's so, so detailed to the point where I, I sort of forgot to mention this. Um, if I can try and zoom in a little bit here. It's so detailed that they've actually got caution. You can see it's written upside down and an arrow pointing to it. Um, I mean, that kind of level of detail you just don't get on any, any um, uh, mass-produced statues out there. Um, fairly okay with the base. Now, I haven't glued him down. He he sits on the base um, perfectly well. Um, he's not going to fall over anytime soon or anything like that, as long as he's on a flat surface. Um, so, I might come back in and change this at some point um, if I'm not totally happy with it. I think it works. I think a splash of colour against the black and white uh, does work. I, I'm I'm happy with the, with the grey. I suppose it's just really this this cog symbol and, um, that I might change going forward. But I know um, the guys behind Star Wars 3D. They're planning on doing loads of troopers now. Um, I think they said the next one is going to be the Sand Trooper, which will be coming out at the end of September. So what I might try and do is try and stay on top of these and try and get them out as they produce them each month. Because to be honest. They're pretty simple builds and, and paint jobs. I mean, all, all the troopers are just essentially variations of black and white um, with the odd spot of colour on them. So, yeah, they might not be the most interesting of videos from a paint job point of view, but they're going to be nice looking models for sure. And I think people are probably going to be interested in, in these ones because I think some of the characters I've been doing recently have been pretty obscure, really. So it's nice to just... Everyone knows what a Stormtrooper is. Uh, so it's nice to... Nice to show that off. Um, yeah, again, just go into some of the details on the, on the sculpt here. Um, the uh, satchel, the bag, whatever your holster for the blaster came out quite nice. So I, I printed the lower half from the waist down all as one piece, including this. Um, but it came out fantastic. I mean, I was a bit worried about the, the little clasp printing out okay, but it did absolutely fine. I printed the arms, leg... Um, yeah, arms, body and head and gun separately for ease of painting but that is also available as one piece I really like the helmet um, I think on the on the 3D renders I wasn't convinced um, it, sometimes the, the images of the renders don't quite look right it's not until you sort of print it out that you, you can see it properly um, and yeah I, I was a bit I thought the helmet looked a bit sort of wide initially but printing out and seeing, seeing the model as one piece it, no it, it looks spot on to me Possibly the blaster is a little bit big, um, but I don't know. Again, you, you sort of misremember things, don't you, when you um, watch films and whatnot. I mean, to be fair, there's no way that blaster is fitting in that bag. <laughs> it wouldn't even go down halfway um, before it would be sticking out and falling out. But I, I wonder about that, because I wonder about the film, because I, I don't know if we ever actually saw the, the guns in, in the holsters or not, so... That might just be a, a case of the movie took some liberties there. Now, as you know, I am an avid collector of Star Wars, um, particularly vintage toys and also statues, hence why I like doing this 3D printing. So I thought I'd just bring out um, Stormtrooper statue by Gentle Giant, which is in the same scale. And this came out in 2009. And it's just a nice little sort of comparison against the two, really. Um, first thing that sort of jumps out is 
how kind of skinny this guy looks um, against this one. I think I think this guy is is more accurate because I think anyone who's put tried to wear stormtrooper armor it it does bulk them up a bit. Um, now talking of gun about the gun, what I did notice now this this statue by General Giant actually had interchangeable parts, um, and you could display whether you wanted the the gun or not. I was talking about sizes of guns. Now again, I don't know if this is significant or not, but if you can see this huge difference in size here. Now of course this gun does actually fit in that holster, but this definitely looks a little on the small side um, to me. So yeah, I don't know which one's more accurate, maybe somewhere in the middle. But either way, the rule of cool is, is really what's important. But what I, would, I think find so fascinating with with three D printing, and I'm still, I mean, I'm, I'm new to. I only started doing it sort of six months ago. Um, what what I love is the fact, the results you can get, um, the printing quality. I mean, all all I've got is a Elegoo uh, Saturn II, um, and you know, I'm still new to it. But the results I, I'm able to get out of this thing is is phenomenal. Um, obviously, it helps having fantastic sculpts, but when you compare, um, you know, licensed statues against the stuff that you're printing, in, in my opinion, quite often the, the printed one comes out as a better quality because it's able to go into detail that um, mass-produced licensed ones just cannot do, and I think this is fairly. Um, I, I appreciate this is a few years old. This one. Um, but I think, I and mean, with prices now uh, of what statues are going for, you know, they're, they're well into the hundreds now. And I don't really think the quality has improved all that much on, on your basic 1 6 scale statues that the likes of Giant of Giant have put out. So, I mean, the costs of. Once all your out, initial costs are obviously out the window, you know, your cost of your printer, your, your, your paints. All, all your material costs, your ongoing costs are next to nothing. I mean, I think the the, the S. I'm actually part of the Patreon, so I get I think it's like ten pound a month, um, and I get a bunch of models from Star Wars 3D anyway. But if you just wanted to buy this um, file on its own, I think it's like twenty dollars. So twenty dollars and um, a bottle of bottle of resin, you know, uh, probably a bottle of resin. I tend to get mine for less than twenty pound a bottle, um, and you've got this. You know, it's it, it's incredible to me. Um, I mean, I, I do wonder whether licensed statues are, you know, the, the death knell is coming for them. Because um, honestly, there's there's no turning, no going back on it. And, I mean, I say, you, you can see the two side by side. Um, I would argue that anyone would be able to tell the difference on which one is a licensed statue and which one has been printed. Okay, this this guy's looking pretty shiny at the moment, because he's, just because of the, the finish they've done on him. It, um that's that's probably the, the only real obvious one on on the first case. Um, if I'd used a gloss varnish on this guy, I could have had him equally shiny, uh, but I didn't want him to look too too shiny really. Okay, well I think I'm probably just waffling now. Um, as I say, I, I I still love the fact because I mean at the end of the day I am a, a collector at heart, or I always have been. So the fact that I'm able to um, create my own collectibles now is is still just mind blowing to me um so <laughs> i'm going to continue to do this for for some time to come i'm going to fill my place up to the brim with stuff um yeah this was probably a dangerous combination really but what I, what i might start doing now is actually perhaps moving on um selling off some of my um licensed ones that i bought over the years um and replacing them with ones i've made because um, I mean, I suppose really, I don't, I don't need duplicates on things, and I think at the end of the day, I, I'm, I just want to keep the one that's the best quality. I'm not just going to keep one simply just because I made it. I'm going to, you know, take the two and think, well, actually, which one do I prefer? And the winners is are probably going to be the the ones that stay on. And the thing is with 3D printing as well, I think looking into the future of it, there people are going to continue to make models for years to come. Hopefully, fingers crossed. So a bit like with modern statue collecting, there's always a new statue, always a new variation of it, which might be slightly better than the one before. So sure, if down the line another stormtrooper statue is made, there's nothing stopping me, you know, making that one um, and keeping that one in favour of this because the price there's there's so little cost attached to making these things. Whereas with a statue, I mean, you really don't want to spend 
three hundred, four hundred pounds on a on a one six scale statue, and then six months later, the same character comes out but a better sculpt. So you got to then shell out that amount of money again. Three um, D printing, it really doesn't matter. The, the, the cost is so minimal. Um, and and obviously, of course, you can make multiples. I mean, if I wanted to make a whole bunch of stormtroopers, I mean, sure, they'd all be in the same pose, but hey, an army of these type of guys would would be fantastic, especially maybe possibly at a smaller scale. Okay, I really will wrap it up now because I, I am rabbiting on. Um, so I hope, hope you enjoyed that. Um, one thing I should probably say, which I never say in my videos, I probably uh, I never actually ask people to like, subscribe, and leave comments, which is pretty much of a YouTube faux pas. Um, so yeah, if you, if you can do all of those things, if you haven't before, that would be fantastic and just helps sort of support the channel a little bit and um, hopefully gets to a few more people. Okay, take care everyone, and I will see you in the next one.